Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage here. Day two of the Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit. This is the public sector across the globe. This is their reInvent, this is their big event. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman, and also Dave Vellante has been here doing interviews. Our next guest is, uh, we got Doug Van Dyke. He's the Director of U.S. Federal, Civilian, and Nonprofit Sectors of the group. Welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. John, thank you for having me. So you have uh, been in the federal kind of game and public sector for a while. You've known, uh, worked with Teresa for, uh, at Microsoft before she came to reInvent. 15 years now. How's she doing? Oh, she's doing great. You saw her on main stage yesterday. Yeah. Um, force of nature, love working with her, love working for her. Yeah. I mean, this is, uh, like you were saying, this is our reInvent here in D.C. And uh, 14,000 plus, 15,000 uh, registrations, just, she's on the top of her game. What I'm really impressed with, you, uh, with her and, and, and your team as well is the focus on growth, but innovation, right? It's not just about you know, knock down the numbers and compete. And certainly you're competing against people who are playing all kinds of tricks. Um, you know, got Oracle out there, you got IBM, you've beaten at the CIA. You got, it's a street battle, okay, uh, out there in, in this area in DC. You guys are innovating there. You're doing stuff with nonprofits. You've got mission driven, you're doing the educate stuff. So it's not just a one trick pony here. Let's take us through some of where you guys' are, heads are at now because you're successful, everyone's watching you. You're not small anymore. What's the, what's, the, what's the story? So I think that the differentiator for us is our focus on the customers. You know, we've got a, a great innovation story at the Department of Veterans Affairs with vets.gov. So five years ago, if a, a veteran went out to get the services that the government was going to provide them, they had to pick from 200 websites. And it just wasn't easy to navigate through 200 websites. So, the, uh, the innovation group at Veterans Affairs, the digital services team figured out, you know, let's pull this all together under a single portal with vets.gov, it's running on AWS, and now veterans have a single interface into all the services that they want. Yeah, Doug, one of the things I've been impressed, my first year coming to this, I've been to many other AWS shows, but you've got all these kind of overlapping communities. Of course, the federal government, but state and local, education. You've got this a civilian agency, so give us a little bit of flavor about that experience here at the show, what trends you're hearing from those customers. Yeah, so what's great for me is I've been here almost uh, six and a half years, and I've seen the evolution. And you know, there were the early customers who were just the pioneers like Tom Soderstrom from JPL who was on main stage. And then we saw the next wave where there were programs that needed a course correction like at Center for Medicare Medicaid with healthcare.gov where Amazon Web Services came in, took over, the, you know, helped them with the marketplace, you know, get that going. And now we're doing some great innovative things at CMS aggregating data from all 50 states, about 75 terabytes, so they can do research on fraud, waste, and abuse that they couldn't do before. Um, you know, so we're helping our customers innovate on the cloud and in the cloud, and it, it's, it's been a great opportunity. Oh, oh my God, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing Tom Soderstrom two years ago. Okay. Everybody gets real excited when you talk about space, and it's easy to talk about innovation there, but you know, talks about innovation throughout the customers because some people will look at it and be like, oh, come on, government and their bureaucracy and they're behind, but you know, what, what kind of innovation are you hearing from your customers? So there's an exciting one with Department of Energy. They, um, you know, there's a limited amount of resources that you have on premise. Well, they're doing research on the uh, Large Hadron Collider in CERN, Switzerland, and they needed to double the amount of capacity that they had on premise. So went to the AWS cloud, fired up 50,000 cores, brought the data down, and they could do research on it. So we're making things possible that couldn't be done previously. What are some of the examples that um, government entities and organizations are doing to create innovation in the private sector? Because the private sector has been the leader to the public sector, and now you're seeing people starting to integrate it. I mean, half the people behind us that are exhibiting here are from the commercial side doing business in public sector and public sectors doing enabling action in the private sector. Talk about that dynamic, because it's not just public sector. Right. Can you just share yeah, your- these, these public private. Um, so great example with NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. 
Um, they have a new program called NextRad. It's the or NextRad. It's the next generation of Doppler radar. They have 160 stations across the world collecting moisture, air pressure, all of the indicators that help predict weather. They partner with us at AWS to put this data out and through our open data program, and then organizations like the Weatherbug can grab that information, government information, and use it to build the application that you have on your iPhone that predicts the weather, so you know whether to bring an umbrella to work tomorrow. So you guys are enabling the data from, or stuff from the public for private entrepreneurial activity. Absolutely. All right, talk about the nonprofits. What's going on there? Obviously, um, we heard, saw some stuff on stage with Teresa, the work she's showcasing a lot of the nonprofit. A lot of mission-driven entrepreneurship's happening. Here in DC, it's almost a Silicon Valley-like dynamic where stuff that was never funded before is getting funded because they can do cloud, they can stand it up pretty quickly and get it going. So you're seeing kind of a, a resurgence of mission-driven entrepreneurship. What does the nonprofit piece of it look like now for AWS? How do you talk about that? Sure, well again, one of the areas that I'm really passionate about being here and, and you know, being one of the people who helped start our nonprofit vertical inside of AWS, we now have over 12, or I'm sorry, 22,000 nonprofits using AWS to keep going. And, and the, the mission of our nonprofit vertical is just to make sure that no nonprofit would ever fail for lack of infrastructure. So we partnered with TechSoup, which is an organization that helps you know, vet and coordinate um, our cloud credits. So nonprofit, small nonprofit organizations can go out through TechSoup, get access to credits, so they don't have to worry about their infrastructure. And, and you know, we fund- Free credits? Uh, yeah, those, for, those credits, yeah, is, with the TechSoup membership, they get those, yeah, and, and you know, using the word credit, it's more like a grant of AWS Cloud. So, so you and, guys are enabling almost grants. It, it, yes, uh, cloud grants. Yeah, not cash grants, but cloud grants. Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Well, so how is that converting for you in your mind? Can you share some examples of some nonprofits that are sure, successful? Sure, we had a, a, a great presentation, and I think it was your last interview, Game Changer, where you know, these smaller nonprofits can have a really large impact. And, um, but then we're also working with some of the larger nonprofits too, the American Heart Association that built their precision medicine platform to match genotype, phenotype information so we can further cardiovascular research. They have this great mission statement. They want to reduce uh, cardiovascular disease by 20% by 2020. And we're going to help them do that. You guys are doing a great job, I got to say. It's been fun to watch and now we're going to be, we've been covering you guys for the past two years now here at the event. A lot more coming on in DC. The CIA win a few years ago, certainly the shot heard around the cloud. That's been well documented. The Department of Defense looking good off the certain indicators. Um, but what's going on in the trends in the civilian agencies? Can you take a minute to kind of give an update on that? Yeah, so I, I started earlier saying I've seen the full spectrum. I saw the very beginning and then I, I've seen um, all the way to the, you know, the end where I think it was three years ago at this event, I talked to Joe Paiva, who was the former CIO for Department of Commerce, ITA, the International Trade Association, he had data center contracts coming up for renewal. And he made a really brave decision to cancel those contracts. And so he had 18 months to migrate the entire infrastructure for ITA over onto AWS. And you know, it, it, there's nothing like an, an impending date to, to move. So you know, we've got agencies that are going all in on AWS, and I think that's just a, a sign of the times. Uh, data centers, I mean, anyone, we're a startup nine years into it, we've never had a data center. I think most startups don't. Born, born in the cloud. Born in the cloud, that's us. Thanks so much for coming on, appreciate the time. Congratulations on your success, uh, AWS, public sector, doing great, global public sector. You guys are doing great, building nations as well. We had Baja Rain on as well. Um, good luck, and the ecosystems looks good. You guys did a good job, so congratulations. John Stu, thank you very much right, for having me here today. Live coverage here, we are in Washington, D.C. for CUBE coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. We got some more interviews after this short break. <laughs>